Alright, what's up internet? If you've been following our Facebook page, you know that I have an EVGA PSU that went kaput. It broke down. Now, I got this PSU. It's one of the more expensive ones, the Supernova 1000 watts. I got it as a regular consumer. Yes, I run Hardware Sugar. We're a PC shop in Manila. But I got this particular power supply unit just as a regular consumer. It supposedly has a warranty of 10 years and I bought it September 2017. It broke down June 2020, well within the warranty period. So I was thinking, let's try out EVGA's RMA process. How easy is it to get a replacement? How much would I need to pay? Will I get a replacement? So EVJ is very big about, you know, you can go straight to us. I've noted before in my past videos when we've had EVJ graphics cards that there's a very big sign. If you have a problem, come to us. So I was actually quite keen to try them out, to really go straight to them. As to cut a long story short, the RMA process was very impressive and very fast. I first reached out to them on July 13. I sent them an email saying that, hey, you know, I have one of your PSUs. I bought it from Amazon US and I received it in the US, but I'm based in the Philippines now and what can we do about this? And the very next day, July 14, they replied saying that, no worries, here's the process to get your RMA started. And the process is quite easy to do, straightforward. Number one, you need to register as a member on their site. After that, you register your purchase using the invoice from whatever shop you got it from. Since I got mine from Amazon, it's easy to find the invoice. And in fact, um, and in fact EVGA already sends you instructions if like, oh, you got it from Amazon or from Newegg. Here are the instructions and it's was very easy to locate the invoice even from three years ago. So once that was done, you just need to request for RMA and that was it in a nutshell. It was a very simple process. However, I do have one note and one annoyance. My note is something to look out for if you're doing RMA outside of the States. I signed up as a member on the US EVGA site. So that's EVGA.com. So I sent all of my details there. I registered the purchase there and I basically did everything there. But when it came time to ask for an RMA, I couldn't find the button. EVGA in the email was like, okay, there's gonna be like an option there, a form on our site and you just click that for the RMA. And I couldn't find it. But when I went back to the email of EVGA, I noticed that the site they told me to go to was not the US EVGA, but the Asian site or the Asian EVGA. And that's asia.evga.com. And when I logged on to that, it was straightforward. I didn't need to submit any further details. Basically, all of the information I had given to the US EVGA site was already duplicated in the Asian EVGA site. So the two sites do share a database. Everything I told the US one was already encoded or already appeared in the Asian one. But it was only on the Asian one that I was able to find or there was an option for me to do an RMA. But at least you didn't need to submit the same information. Basically, it's the same site but just geo-locked to certain features such as RMA for your area. Not really annoyed with that, got a bit confused, but overall I understand why I would need to log on to the Asian EVGA. One thing I did have that I was a bit annoyed with was before you can request for the actual RMA, you need to submit a question to EVGA. You need to give them your system specs, basically everything, all the technical data that you can give them, and then you need to ask them a question. I don't understand why I needed to go through this whole like this facade of you know having a question and answer format over a web form that oh here's what's wrong and maybe they can try to fix it since I was pretty 100% sure that the power supply was busted. But on the other hand there are some computer users who are pretty sure what the problem is that the hardware is defective that it's busted it's not working anymore. You know it would have been nice instead of having to do the song and dance of a question and you need to wait for a response. You send a question and you need to wait for their answer before you can initiate an RMA. But that annoyance aside, the response was very quick. 
So July 13, I uploaded my invoice and I also submitted my question. And the very next day, July 14, EVGA was like, yeah, sure, no problem. Let's do the RMA. So no problems. The very next day, the RMA was approved. And again, EVGA sends you very clear instructions on how to go about sending the item back to them. They send you a way bill that you print out. They also have recommended couriers, TNT or FedEx. And well, just to complicate things further, of course, I didn't follow their recommended couriers. I used DHL. You don't need to use the recommended couriers of EVGA because everything worked out fine with DHL. EVGA also tells you to wrap the item in a box. Number one, you don't need the original box. I had the original box, but I opted not to use it because I was only sending back the power supply unit and it's much smaller. It takes up less space than the actual volume of the box. And you don't want to send too big a box because that's extra space that you're paying for. It's gonna be more expensive for you. You just really want to send the item. So what I did was I wrapped up the PSU in bubble wrap. I had the foam border on one end. And then I just got some cardboard stuff basically and stuck it on. So it, you know, it's, it's a makeshift box. It wasn't even a real box. And that was it, that was fine. I brought it to DHL. DHL put it in a pouch even, not in a box. So the primary protection of the power supply unit was just the bubble wrap. And why am I making such a big deal out of this since it's defective anyway? So who cares how you wrap the defective item? EVGA cares. They were very clear in the email that please wrap the item well because we are not responsible for damage that is damage that occurs during shipping. So I think they're trying to point out that, you know, it gets really denged up on its way back to us. We can sort of look at it and say that, oh, you know, it was working before you sent it, but it got so badly banged up on the way to us that now it's not working. But the damage was caused by the shipping, not because of anything that happened prior to shipping. So I just wanted to wrap the item very neatly and securely so that there was really no doubt that, yes, the item looks good, there was no damage on the exterior and the problem really was that, you know, it, the item just failed on the customer prior to shipping. I admit it, I didn't really follow the instructions to the letter. I used a different courier. I was a bit liberal in the interpretation of packing and putting it in a box. But everything worked out. I sent it July 31. So since I didn't track the shipment anymore, I don't really know what day the PSU got to EVGA. But on August 6, EVGA emailed me saying that, okay, RMA approved and we are sending out the new PSU now and you can expect it to arrive around August 10. And the amazing thing was, EVGA also says that you need to bear the cost of the item being sent back to you. So I paid for shipment from Manila to Taiwan. That was around 2,200 pesos. I didn't, you know, I, I, I wasn't sure, like, how is EVGA gonna charge me for the shipment back to me? So I was wondering how much it was gonna cost, but I didn't pay anything for the return shipment, uh, much to my surprise. So now I'm wondering, when I paid DHL, because they asked me what this is for, and I'm like, warranty replacement. So I don't know if they automatically knew that, okay, this is gonna have to go back to him and we're just gonna charge him round trip. So I expected the 2,200 to be just one way. But when the return PSU got back to me here in Manila, now I'm confused. Either EVGA was the one who paid DHL for Taiwan Manila, or when I paid the 2,200, that was already for a round trip. If EVGA was the one that paid for the shipment back to me, thanks very much EVGA. And again, so just to summarize, everything was very straightforward. Everything was very fast. You know, you have a 10-year warranty on a PSU and it fails in the third year. You're sort of wondering like, well, you know, what happened? But their warranty process is very good. It's very easy to get a return. And as a special, you know, I, I saved unboxing. I, did, I have not unboxed the new PSU yet, but we're gonna do that now. And we'll see what EVGA has sent us. All right, so very clearly from EVGA, and let's see what they've sent us. I hope you can. All right, so we got some, we have an official looking 
paper with some basic address details and things like that from EVGA. Bubble wrap. Oh, it's actually EVGA bla black box. So inside the black box is, is a power supply unit. And it is, is it my supernova? Oh yes. So it is indeed the same model as the one I sent out. Uh, my apologies, I kept saying it was 1000 watts. It was actually 1200 watts. All right, so straightforward procedure from EVGA. Very impressive how quickly they respond, especially that it's a time, you know, it's still the time of COVID and everybody's business is a little shaky. From my initial email, where they took only one day to reply, from my request to RMA, where it only took one day to reply, and then the actual return of the item, I sent it out again July 31. I got it August 11. That's less than two weeks round trip from Manila to Taiwan. Taiwan figuring out that yes, this thing is broken and he needs a replacement. And Taiwan sending it back to me here in Manila. Overall, no complaints. Good job, EVGA. And I have mentioned that, you know, we do run Hardware Sugar. It's a PC shop here in Manila. The way we handle warranty is very straightforward as well. It's a one-year shop warranty. We like to call it a no BS warranty because we don't hassle the customer. We don't, a lot of shops in the Philippines ask you to, oh, you need to bring back original packaging and you need to show your receipt and things like that. We keep track of all our customers so we know what we sold to who and we don't ask for original packaging. Um, basically, our warranty boils down to the three R's. Repair, replacement, or refund. Those are the three options we consider when somebody comes to us with a warranty claim. And we're probably the only shop that actually that actually boasts about or pinagyayabang namin yung warranty process namin. Uh, so much so na we have an entire Facebook album devoted just to, oh, ito, may bumalik na item. Ito yung ginawa namin. Because yung tingin namin, hindi ka dapat mahiya na may item ka na nabenta na nasira. Because you have no control over that. That's a manufacturing concern. Regardless of the brand, things are going to break. There's no brand that is 100% working all of the time for the length of time they promise you. No matter how expensive that brand is, no matter how good its reputation, you know, stuff happens in the real world and things break down. But the true measure of a shop, gano paggaling yung shop na yan, is in how they respond to a warranty claim. Pinapahirapan ba yung customer? Do they give the customer a hard time? Or do they make it easy on the customer? And so, as a consumer, and as someone who owns a PC shop, I am actually quite happy with EVGA. So, kudos to the brand. And we actually do want to carry more EVGA products, but their, our supplier is sold out now. The next time, the next scheduled shipment for EVGA is still November. So still quite a long way away until we get new EVGA products in store. I was actually very impressed with the direct to brand RMA of EVGA. So if you guys have any, you know, experience with other brands RMAs or EVGA's RMA, please do leave it in the comments. Uh, I, I like to hear about experiences like that. If you do have any, you know, experience with RMAs, please do let us know. And thanks for watching. So I hope that these basic tips help you. If you found this video helpful, please drop a like and hit the subscribe button. For your PC needs, consider buying from us Hardware Sugar at Lazada or on our website. You can find links in the description below. And thank you for watching. See you next video. And we make it super easy for the customer. Um, it, it's basically the three R's. It's either refund, replacement, or... Refund, replacement. Refund, replacement. What's the third R?